What's going on, y'all? We are back out here today on the Old Town Autopilot 120, and we are going to be targeting some rock jetties, looking for some flounder. It is an extremely windy day out here on the coast, so trying to get tucked in behind some rock jetties, see if we can find some flat fish. Y'all stay tuned, see if we can get it done. So these are the rock jetties that we're going to be fishing this morning, and the lure that I'm going to be throwing is the Southern Salt Hoodwink. This is our own personal lure. Uh, the color I'm going to start off throwing is a nuke juice color, uh, which is kind of like a translucent light green with some red flake. It is an amazing color uh, to use in cleaner water, which is what we have here. So we're going to bounce it around. If we're not getting any bites, we will switch over uh, to a bolder color like a pearl white, maybe even a chartreuse or something like that. Got them. There we go. That's a little flounder. <laughs> that is our first fish of the morning. Haven't been hitting these rock jetties long at all. <laughs> and that right there is a targeted species, but my goodness, is it small. Come here, buddy. Get that hook out of you. <laughs> I thought it was a trash fish down there because I kind of felt it vibrating a little bit, and maybe it was at first, but that's what we ended up pulling in right there tiny little flounder see if we can find one a little bit bigger all right let's see if we can upgrade that guy i think we can i think we're in the right spot there's so much bait that's down there right now off these rocks man i'm just getting tatted by pinfish and croakers which is a good thing like that right there is a healthy supply of bait down there which is definitely going to bring in your trout redfish and flounder it's also a bad thing because anytime you're fishing around pinfish and croakers they're going to tear up your soft plastics that might be one got them what do we got oh speckled trout <laughs> not a bad one either this would be a keeper trout right here for sure. Come here, dude. It is about time for these trout. Start making their way around these rock jetties and stuff. Ton of bait in through here. Come here. Chill out. Yeah, that's about a 16 inch trout or so. See you, girl. All right. Now, I did make the switch over to a pearl white just because around certain sections of those rocks it was getting real dirty looking and uh, i just felt like that nuke juice might be a little too uh too much of a subtle color so i wanted something a little more bold and uh hooked up on that trout on the old pearl white oh that might just be a bait fish, but it's definitely a thump. Got him. Flounder number two. <laughs> that is flounder number two and tiny flounder number two. Golly, this one. I didn't think they could get much smaller than the first one. <laughs> Look at that guy. My goodness. All right, dude. See you in a couple years. Oh, my God. All right, well. It has definitely been a morning of dinks. Gotta see if we can get us a bigger one. But yeah, we're just kind of going down these rocks right here and kind of doing like a little double bump, sitting in somewhere between two and three foot of water. Really have had a lot of bait fish uh, kind of hitting my lures. And matter of fact, these smaller flounder are um, kind of hitting it like a bait fish. Definitely a lot of fish in the area. We just got a good thump. There he is. That's a better fish. Yeah, that's a good one. That is a good flounder right there. Right as we were talking about it. Oh, we're gonna go ahead and spot lock. That's a big one. That's a big boy. We are in a really, really good spot right here. 
Y'all look at that fish. Try not to be too, too loud. There's a lot of people over there on that pier. I don't want to bring a whole lot of attention over here, but man, what a fish. Y'all, this one should go somewhere around 19 or 20 inches, I would hope. That's a really, really fine looking fish right there, y'all. My goodness. That fish is 18 and a half inches, and I mean just super, super thick fish right there. So thankful to have found this guy. But that right there, that is why we come out and we fish rock jetties, because you really never know what you're gonna catch, and flounder just absolutely love hanging around these rock jetties because of all the mullet and bait fish uh, that kind of comes in here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pop this guy on a stringer. I have a good recipe planned for y'all and we're gonna be cooking this guy at the end. So yeah, what a freaking fish, my goodness. All right, well that is another one for the hoodwink. White minnow of death right there. Three fish on the morning, four, sorry, four fish on the morning. Three flounder, one trout, and we got one on a stringer to take to the house. All right, so not a bad morning out here so far. Um, I do want to say we have a ton of flounder content getting ready to come out to y'all So if you like flounder content be sure to hit that subscribe button Also earlier this year I set out the goal to hit 40,000 subscribers this year and y'all made that happen I do appreciate each and every one of y'all for subscribing and supporting the channel throughout the years It means a ton to me and uh, yeah, I just couldn't be more thankful uh, for each and every one of y'all that continue to support the channel. I can only imagine where we'll be by the end of the year, maybe 50,000 if we're lucky, uh, but yeah, I do appreciate it. Uh, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. A lot of good content getting ready to come out to y'all. All right, let me show y'all the setup that I've been using this morning. I get a lot of questions about my rod, reel, uh, line, and stuff like that. So real quick, I just go over it. Uh, so the rod that I'm using here today is a Chubby Rods 7.2 medium fast action. Uh, and to me, that is the best flounder rod you can have is a medium uh, power fast action rod. Uh, now this Chubby Rods is, in my opinion, one of the uh, most affordable rods on the market for the performance that you're getting. These retail for 130 bucks and uh, they are 100% made in America with American tackle components. I will link those down below. I highly, highly recommend this rod. Uh, but the reel that I'm using is a Shimano Corrado 150. Absolutely love Shimano uh, out here in saltwater. The Corrados hold up really, really well. So that's the reel that I'm using. Uh, and then my line is just 15 pound suffix 832 braid. And I have that ran down to a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, this used to be about a four foot leader, uh, but through time I have chopped it down, which doesn't really matter when you're flounder fishing a whole lot. Uh, and then as you can see, I'm about to have to swap it back out because I've either chafed it on some rocks or some lizard fish or Spanish mackerel or something took a good whack at it. Uh, yeah, but that's pretty much it. I already talked about the hoodwink right here, pearl white or our white minnow death color. And then that's just a quarter ounce jig head. All right, y'all, well, we are back at the house now. Did not pick up any more flounder. It was a little bit of a slow day, but we still caught a few fish couple of good ones couple of really really small ones and uh got to take this guy home right here so we are going to make a really really good meal out of this guy uh but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and clean up for y'all and then we're gonna prep some stuff and uh head out on the back porch and cook this guy all right so i am going to be leaving this flounder hole with the skin on right here uh so the first thing i am going to do is just take a spoon and I'm gonna start raking some of these scales off just like this right here. And it's real simple. I just take a spoon and just work it all the way till I knock all of those scales off. So once we do that, we'll flip it over and we're gonna do the bottom side as well. 
All right, so we went ahead and took the scales off of this fish. Also, I went ahead and removed the head off camera, uh, and mainly because YouTube and Facebook's policies with stuff like that are a little bit um, weird, so I didn't want to put that on camera. But uh, anyways, you get the point. Just cut the head off right there. Also want to clean out any of the insides right there to make sure we don't have any of the stomach or anything left in that meat. So now I'm just gonna take my sword uh, fillet knife right here. This is the nine inch medium flex fillet knife. Amazing fillet knife. So I'm gonna link those down below. Definitely check them out. But all we're gonna do is score this fish one way and we're gonna turn them. We're gonna do it the other way and it's just gonna make X's kind of uh, checkering that meat. So just like that right there try to keep your lines uniform mainly for presentation purposes if you don't care what it looks like then uh certainly you don't have to but just like that and then like i said we'll come through and we're gonna go the other way Just checkering that meat, just like that. All right, and that is pretty much it right there. That's gonna allow for a lot of my seasoning and marinade to really get down there in the meat and uh, flavor it throughout the entire fish so yeah we're gonna go ahead and put this in this ziploc bag and i will see y'all on the back porch all right y'all we are back out here on the back deck check it out this is the fish that y'all saw us prep right here we have a super easy but very very tasty recipe right here only calls for two ingredients check it out avocado oil or olive oil whatever you prefer and then we picked up this Spanglish Asadero Surf and Turf seasoning from uh, Bucky's, and it is absolutely amazing. I have tried that seasoning on shrimp, but I have not tried it on fish, and I got a feeling it is going to be very, very good. So, check it out. That's what we got going on right here. And then, over here on the grill, I just got a little two-stage set up. I just got my coals going, so I got all my coals pushed over to one side letting them get kind of hot right there this is going to come together really really easy i just got me a two gallon ziploc bag right here to make sure i can fit that fish down in there and i'm gonna take my avocado oil go ahead and get a decent amount down there in this bag Just like that, should be plenty. Probably about a cup or so. And then we're just gonna take that surf and turf seasoning and dump a healthy amount down there in this oil. So then all we're gonna do is just get it real nice and mixed up right here. We're just trying to make us a good marinade that's gonna fit right beneath the cracks of that flounder right there so just like that should be perfect and then i am going to go ahead put my flounder in the bag that guy barely fits just like that now y'all could marinate this overnight obviously the longer you marinate it for the more uh, those flavors are going to get infused into that flounder but yeah we're just going to make sure we get it nice and tossed up right there just like that and we're going to let that marinate for at least 30 minutes or so uh, which is about the amount of time that it's going to take for my coals to get ready over there on the Weber. All right, so our coals have been going for about 30 minutes now. They are ready to go. We're just going to pull this flounder out, put it in a little sheet pan right there, and then we're going to take the leftovers in this bag and just kind of dump it down right there. 
trying not to waste any of that good juice. Y'all, that seasoning just smells amazing. All right, there we go. Go ahead and just set that off to the side. We're gonna use our hands to just kind of rub that in. Just a little bit right there. Just like that. Airplane. All right. And then we're gonna set our flounder off to the side. And we're gonna let it go for about 15 minutes covered. And we'll come back and we'll check on it. And our fish has been rolling for right around 20 minutes now. Set that off. Smells amazing. So I'm just gonna do a real quick fork test, try to find, you know, the thickest part or so. And it should do just like that and just flake right off the bones. Yeah, buddy. All right, she's done. I'm gonna go ahead and get some mitts, pull this off and uh, do a taste test for y'all. Well, here it is. We're about to go in, dive in for a bite. This is the finished product right there. Super simple and cheap recipe. You know, if you've had a long day on the water and you don't feel like doing all sorts of stuff and building a sauce and doing all the things that y'all might have seen us do here in the past, this is for you. This is really simple like we did. Two ingredients um, and like I said, really, really cheap. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and dive in for a bite here I mean and it just flakes off the bone y'all just just like that nice juicy piece of flounder right there all right let's go in <laughs> y'all that seasoning is on point definitely has like a, a tangy citrus kick a lot of good spices and herb in there i mean that is really just an amazing seasoning i've used it on a few uh things like shrimp um, i've also put a little bit on potatoes stuff like that really really good and that flounder <laughs> that is absolutely killer y'all i'm about to go ahead and dive in finish this meal i hope y'all enjoyed the video if y'all did hit the like button comment with any questions subscribe if you haven't already we'll see y'all next time